Michael Nagy here with Jiggy Jag TV and DiscoveringBands.com. And for everyone watching, if you could share this video on my channel and help support the awesome bands I feature. And today I'm here with Unveil the Strength. How are you doing today? Doing great, man. How are you? I'm good. It's good to have you. Thanks now, you for want another to people. I like to be hat. <laughs> you want to start off by uh, giving us a little history about the band for anyone who doesn't know? Um, Unveil the Strength was... Uh... Basically, the name uh, just kind of uh, comes from digging from a place really deep and kind of overcoming parts of yourself or, or parts of life. And then, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, being being better for it, you know, really just kind of, you know, finding that inner part of you, that grit that, you know, that wants to push through it. And uh, yeah, the band's been around since we started working on music and wow we we started kind of messing around with stuff in 2000 late 2017 and um kind of started with matt snell and i um you know i did a couple songs with somebody and worked on some tunes and then i showed them to matt and matt was like man you know what's up with this and i said i don't know you want to do it and he said yeah i want to do it and then so we got matt on board then Matt, you know, he knew a drummer, drummer named Rish, or I'm sorry, a drummer named Tim Hassamer. And then uh, a few guitar players later, I don't know what it is with guitar players, but uh, a few guitar players later, we have uh, Mr. Uh, Richard Gabriel, and he's uh, he's in the UK. Super great, nice guy. Stoked to have him. And uh, that's kind of where we're at. We've just been releasing songs one by one um we recorded a bunch of songs and did a bunch of videos and it's funny because that we i get constantly asked all the time when are you releasing a record when are you releasing a record and it's interesting because i feel like there's almost like uh, two standards for bands um bands that are established they can release a record and, and they'll be okay they'll do fine but a band that's kind of trying to build themselves up a little bit um, it's it's not smart, in my opinion. I think releasing one song at a time really lets keeps your fans' attention, and you can really drive your message of who you, uh, you know, what you want people to see that you're all about, you know. And um, if I released an entire record, I feel like in two weeks everyone would be like, "Oh, great record, thanks," and we're over it, and that's it. And especially now, you know, I don't have the ability to go tour. If I released a record. I wouldn't have the ability to jump on a tour and play it. So it's kind of, I don't know, you know, the landscape is changing. So you have to adapt. Definitely. And speaking of, you just released a new uh, single, a cover of Kill Switch's uh, And Then Heartache. And it's pretty amazing how you're able to take that and make it your own. You want to tell us a little about that cover? Um, I ended up um, reaching out to a guy named Sean Townsend. And he has a channel on YouTube called Chill Switch Engage. And if you don't know about this channel, you should, and you're leading your life wrong. So fix it now and go follow that page. Because basically what he does is he takes all Kill Switch covers and does these amazing piano pieces. And it's, it's, it's just beautiful and relaxing. And, you know, I've always had um, a soft spot for this song. I think it's one of... Kill Switches. I think it's one of the best songs they, they ever did. Um, I really love Howard Jones. You know, great vocalist, great dude. And uh, I just wanted to do it. And I heard this version and I said, man, I really want to do something different. No one's ever... If you look up this song and look at all the bands that have covered this song, all of them try to do it the same way Kill Switch did it. And there's only one Kill Switch engage, you know? And there's only one kill switch engage, and I don't want to be, you know, I didn't want to be another version of this song. I wanted to do something so different that everyone could say, hey, you know, this is, this is really unique. And as soon as I heard this piano, I was like, dude, this is it. This is the one. And um, we probably recorded that song about, gee, I don't know, maybe two and a half years ago, and we sat on it. And I really didn't know how to release the song. You know, it's really different from all the other stuff we've released. And that's one of the reasons why I feel like now is a good time. Because I feel like, uh, for, well, I mean, for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, 
um, we really wanted to show a different side of the band and the abilities and, and how we can sound. And we're a lot more than just this heavy band. You know, we can do other things. And um, the second reason was I feel like that song has always given me, like, it's a really sad song. It's a really emotional song. But at the end of it, I feel like you get this sort of resolve, right? And I feel like right now with everything going on in the world, and I don't want to get into one side or the other about your politics or, or anything, but we all need to heal. Everybody needs healing. And I feel like, man, this is, this is the time to release this song. And, you know, I hope anybody hears that, hears that song and hears our version and says, man, thank you. You know, that helped me get through what I was going through. So that's, that's the story behind the, the KSE cover. Yeah, I like it a lot. Like you said, so many bands do covers that sound so similar. And you making it your own and that little softer side, it really brings out a different emotion. I like it. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to get a power cord real quick or I'm going to die. Okay. Sorry, man. No, you're good. Technology. <laughs> it's, such a, it's such a crutch. It is. Speaking of, I had, an, I had an interview this afternoon I wasn't able to do because we had this uh, wind and rainstorm here and I had no internet connection. It's crazy how we rely on technology. Where, where are you at? New Jersey. Oh, nice, nice, nice. I've never been to Jersey, man. Really? Yeah, maybe one day we'll get up there. We'll get up that way, the East Coast. We got a big metal scene here, so definitely. Yeah, I, I would love it, man. I hope... Uh, I'm going to be optimistic about 2021. That's all I'm going to say. You know, I, I really want things to kind of, uh, I hope things work themselves out and we can kind of get back to something. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how the landscape, you know, plays out and who's, I mean, I hate to say it, but who's left standing. And I, I mean that by band wise and venue, venue wise. Like, I, I don't know what this, this is going to look like. But, um, you know, I mean, look, man, metal has survived disco. <laughs> we survived grunge. Uh, I mean, metal's, metal's been around for a long time, been through a lot of things, and I think heavy metal will, will live through this. Definitely. When we have live music, everybody's going to come out and support. Everyone being in the house, not being able to do anything, they're going to want to go to concerts. Right, 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 right. Absolutely. Speaking of, uh, what are you currently working on right now? Uh, well, right behind me is, uh, this is, this is my uh, studio in my house. And uh, this is actually where I did all the vocals for the record. Um, we actually all recorded separately. We wrote the songs, we worked on them, we recorded our parts separately, and then we sent it to the mixer and had it mixed. So it's, it's really interesting, like I said, technology, right? You can do that. Um, and it's kind of funny because I promised myself, I said, man, when we do the next record, I really want to get in the room with the guys and really get a vibe and do it. And now COVID's happened. So I'm like, maybe, maybe we are ahead of our time. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, we're, I'm always working on something, you know, I mean, um, the biggest thing I could tell any musician out there is if, you know, you're, you're wondering, Hey, how do I write a song? What do I do? Just record everything. You know, I don't care if you're humming it. Just hum it into your phone. I have so many weird humming things on my phone. It's kind of it's kind of ridiculous. I've got thirty, and some of them I've forgotten about. And I realized I, I might have to take it a step further because I listen to some of them, and I just listen and I go, "Oh, that was totally shit." What was I thinking? What was that about? <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, that's terrible." And then sometimes I'll get in the room and I'll finish it out. And you know the way the way the ideas happen with me is is they kind of happen really fast, and I have to start humming everything, whether it's a guitar riff or a bass or, or drums. I just hum it into the microphone and I just start doing layers and then I just get the idea and then I stop and then I take a deep breath and then I then I take my time and I go back and I go, okay, this is what I'm trying to to convey. It's, it's really it's really strange for me. Like when inspiration hits me, it's really fast. So I feel like I have to hurry up and flush it out or I'll just completely forget. Now, I want to ask, uh, your cover has been pretty successful. Do you think you'll be doing more covers in the future? You know, we've talked about it. Um, it's really hard because, um, like I said, whenever I do a cover, I really want it to be ours. 
And it's almost like, um, I mean, with this one, we went the other direction. You know, most bands, they take, you know, a pop song and then they make it heavy. And they've had a lot of success doing that. And we took a heavy song and we almost kind of, you know, we kind of went the other way, you know. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I love, I mean, man, I really fucking love the 80s. I love oh, the 80s. Me too. But, but the question is, it's like, you know, I feel like all the good songs have been taken. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I mean, uh, we tossed around some ideas for some things. I mean, I'd be curious to know what what people would want to hear. You know, I guess really. You hear that? So hopefully, everyone watching this video can maybe write in the comments of what they'd like to hear. That'd be yeah, cool. I want I want all of you to tell me what we should cover next. And you better you better come up with some good ones. Don't slack. Don't pick something cheesy. I want something good. And you know what? We'll make our own version of it. But, you know, it's got to be a good song. Like, you know, it's true. You know, a good song is a good song no matter what. Like, Phil Collins in the air tonight, like, it's still a good song. Mm -hmm. You know, Mike Tyson definitely made it a little bit more interesting when he did the drum part. Doo -doo -doo -doo. But, you know, hey, man, it's, it's just a great tune. It's a great song. So pick a good song and... Tell us. We yeah, want to play to something for you. Up. Let's get you involved here. All of you. Not you. Not you. But all of you. Yeah, I have a good fan base. People that keep up with the interviews, so it'll be interesting to see what people write. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see it. I mean, um, I don't know. I mean, I mean, everybody likes, like, I love 80s hair music, but I feel like you really have to be careful about making it heavy. I don't know. I don't know how, how it would translate. But there is one song in particular. I'm not gonna say it. I'll just just maybe it will happen. But it's of a hair band, and I think it would be a great tune to be really, really heavy. So maybe that will happen. Awesome. Now I want to ask, you're releasing music right now by singles at a time. Do you know when your next single might be coming out? Um well I think we're look we're looking at 2021. I mean, we've got two videos and we've got five songs and we're just, we're just kind of sitting on them right now. I think we're going to promote our first five songs for the rest of the year and kind of try to grow our fan base doing that. And then 2021, we're going to start um, releasing more songs and um, hopefully getting in the studio next year to write some more material, um, depending on how the touring thing is going to work or look. Um, you know, we just want to make sure that our, our deck of cards is always stacked. Like it's one thing about us that we like to do is we always like to have something to release or something to do. Um, it's awful. <clears throat> I think it's, it's very, I think it's very important. So right now I'm just going to try to enjoy Halloween and Christmas and, uh, yeah. just keep crushing these, these tunes for the rest of the year. Speaking of growing your fan base, how have you gotten your name out so well? gotten so recognized um i don't know i mean uh we we i mean honestly i i mean we just uh we work hard man i mean i can honestly say that everybody in my band will um wake up and they'll go hey let's do something you know and, and everybody kind of has their role you know like i work a lot of the spotify stuff so you know, there's there's all sorts of things out there to help bands grow their Spotify. You just have to look it up and figure it out. Um, you know, just anything from Joey Sturgis, any course from Joey Sturgis, fucking do it. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Just do it and, and, and look at yourself and just get better. I mean, now more than ever, bands have the ability to grow themselves. You know, I think there's a lot of bands out there when they're starting out and they go, hey, who's, who's coming down to save me once I get my big whatever or who's going to give me this? And the reality is no one's coming for you. You've got to do it yourself, man. You've got to get out there and you've got to grind and you've got to work your ass off and, um, and it's going to kick you down a lot. It's going to slap you in the face and, you know, you're going to have people out there that don't like your music and, and that's okay. You know, that's fine. You can't, you can't be everything for everybody. It's one of my favorite quotes, man. I'm, I'm not going to get up there and like, I've already done a death metal record where I scream the entire time. I've already done it. And uh, I told myself with this band, I said, that's just not what I want to do. 
I just want to write good songs and uh, let's just see what happens. Good yeah, songs, awesome. ca catchy choruses, great guitar solos. Those are the requirements. Yeah. Now I want to ask, how have you handled the whole quarantine time and been able to stay focused? Um, to be perfectly honest, I think in the beginning we were all kind of, kind of in, in shell shock so to speak i think everybody really didn't know what to do and you saw a lot of like we were seeing bands that just kind of pretended like nothing happened and we're just going to keep releasing music as usual and and then you would look at their 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 videos and they would just they just weren't getting the love and they weren't getting the same thing as pre-covid and so you know we just kind of looked at that as a sign and we said hey you know what let's just chill out for a little bit um, and I, I called everybody up and said, hey, um, just worry about um, your families right now. And, you know, music's going to be there. And we'll give it like a couple of months and we'll chill out and then we'll start creating again. And so, you know, I don't think that there's anything wrong with, with people in the industry to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to take this time and spend it with my family and enjoy it. And, uh, you know, let's see what happens. Because I think everybody was uncertain for a minute and really didn't know. Um, and, and it's funny because still right now there's a lot of bands that won't even talk about it. They'll, they'll just pretend like nothing's happening. And it's like, hey, um, something happened and it affected our industry. It's a, the, the live industry has been crushed. Um, but yes, we do. I think people still need to hear music. They still need to hear it released. I think they're more receptive now to hear music because I think they've realized, hey, um, this isn't going to end in the, like, what was the initial thing they said? Hey, we just need to quarantine for 15 days and then it'll all be over or something. And everybody had a major pucker factor and was super stressed out for like a month. And then what, 15 turns into 30, 30 turns into 90. Like, I, I, I think now people are just like, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah, like just... Let's just let's just go back to some sort of normality, right? To, to, I mean, fuck, it's like almost like a coping mechanism at this point. Yeah. So, so I think people are, are definitely becoming more open to hear, you know, what's going on with bands because they're like, damn, I am stuck at home. Um, I'm not going to go back to my job. Um, you know, a lot of people, like our band, for example, most people that listen to our band are either in their car or working out. That's the two biggest things for us. And once this happened, all of our numbers, they dropped. And it's because, well, nobody was driving to work and all the gyms closed. So now I think people are more like, hey, you know what? I'm at home. I'm, I'm less stressed. I know I'm home for a while. I'm going to listen to music again. Hey, I've got my home gym set up. I'm going to listen to music again. So I think everybody in the beginning was trying to find their routines. And now they've found them. And they're like, hey, you know what? Now... I can incorporate music back into my life because I, I feel like, you know, music is a luxury item. You know, I mean, there's two types of people in the world. There's people that get stressed and listen to more music and I love you. And there's people that get stressed and then like kind of start shutting things down going, I can't think about this. I can't do this. I don't enjoy anything. And, and I, you know, it is what it is, but you know, like I, I have a tendency to do both. I listen to more music and shut things down. <laughs> yeah, like you said, it was interesting at first. A lot of the bands when this first started, you didn't hear much from them, but now all of a sudden they're releasing music and posting, and it's interesting. Yeah. How I think it's a good thing. I think it needs to happen. You know, I mean, um, there's a lot of people. It makes me sad um, when people don't think we need art. You know, art art is a very important thing, invoking emotion um, from people through music is a huge thing. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great form of self-expression and it really triggers memories and creates memories. I mean, I, I don't know how many times I hear a song and I go, oh, that reminds me of that time. And, you know, you can't take that away. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, that's not good. If yeah. you want to do that, fuck you. <laughs> if you want to take away music, you're a dick. <laughs> it seems like that's what suffered the most with the pandemic is the arts, the music, the theaters, all the entertainment, which has been unfortunate. It's really sad to see. I mean, 
you know, I grew up, you know, in a family of musicians and, uh, you know, they would play, man, four or five nights a week. And, and the guys that are like the cover bands or the guys that are like, you know, they really, they literally make their living by playing the bar four or five nights a week. And I mean, those guys are devastated right now. Like it, it's, it's, it's really, it's really sad. And I know that there's lots of nonprofits out there that are doing their best to keep the industry people afloat. But I think we just need to figure out how to open stuff up. I mean, it really makes me sad to see people in an airline with all their masks on, but we can't have concerts or, you know, and, and I don't want to get too political about it. I guess I'm just simply saying like, as Americans, we are ingenious people. And I think we're very clever and we've survived a lot of things. So why can't we figure out how to make this work? Exactly. The world that doesn't make sense now because like Florida's opened up so like bands can play down there, but here in like Jersey they can't. It's closed it's still right. kind of closed, so it's kind of odd. Right. It, it's really it's really sad. And and I hope I hope a lot of these states sort that out. I mean, uh you know, I think it's good for I mean, what did they what did I read today? I read that what domestic violence is up, suicide is up, uh mental health is down right now. Um, and, you know, and I'm super big into mental health, man. If you guys don't know that, um, go follow Heart Support if you don't know who Heart Support is. Uh, it's an amazing organization, and basically it's founded by uh, the singer for August Burns Red, and it's a nonprofit, and basically it's 100% about mental health. And it's, it's basically mental health coming from bands that you love, and, be, and it's a community of fans of heavy metal and it's all about mental health and supporting each other they have an open forum where they you know they they give each other peer support and you know i i was interviewed on there a couple of times great organization um anybody out there who's going through something right now please reach out to heart support and um you know get yourself sorted you know it's important right now it really is i'm glad you mentioned that because the media doesn't cover that much about the mental health and what the pandemic has done that like you said the suicide rates the anxiety the depression all that right, right. they need to be talked about more and studied more so it's awesome you bring that up yeah i mean uh i mean no no kidding i've lost a couple people in the past couple of weeks i mean I, i'm a i'm a combat veteran i have ptsd so i kind of get it from both ends you know you have all these suicides happening in the music industry and then i have suicides happening from combat veterans so it is, man, I, I mean, it's not something I'm proud to say, but man, I've lived it too much. And um, you have to check on each other. You know, everybody gets down and uh, everybody has a weak moment, but that doesn't make you weak. It's okay to have weak moments. Just uh, know that when you fall down, you just, you got to get back up. Well said. Yeah. Now, if uh, people want to look you up uh, online, find you on social media, get your music, how do they do that? Um, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, www.unveilthestrength.com. Um, if you go to Google and you type in Unveil the Strength, you will find something. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. All over the social media, then. Yeah, that, that's where we're at, man. Awesome. Well, it was great having you and talking with you, and everyone looked them up. Hey, everyone... thank you, guys. Thank you for having us. It's always, uh, it's always a blessing giving these opportunities to talk to you, and uh, you know we're grateful every day for it. So thank you for having us, man. It means a lot. Definitely. Don't forget, everyone, to comment below what song you'd like to see them maybe cover in the future. We want to know. I'm serious. Don't jump out. Don't scroll. I see you. Don't do that. Type your thoughts down and hit enter. Come on. Use your big boy voice. Let's do this. <laughs>